Hi everybody, it's Raven Ways. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm doing some I'm doing some royal astrology here. I'm doing the natal chart, discussing the natal chart of the Prince of Wales, also known as Prince Charles. Okay? So this is his natal chart done in whole sign houses. He has a rising sign that's in Leo, Royal Leo, okay? The Royal Lion, the Loyal Royal Lion. And he has a son in Scorpio, all alone here in Scorpio. And he has a moon in a very powerful, exalted position in the 10th house of Taurus. All right. So this is his chart. He's having a 12th house perfection year. And as a traditional astrologer, I use perfection years to discuss the nature of the topics that will be coming up in the year from birthday to birthday. So from now up until his next birthday, he will be having a 12th house perfection year. And the 12th house is a very difficult year. It's about being isolated, feeling that things are not going that great. And boy, oh boy, is he ever having a bad year this year. So I'm going to be talking about that a little bit. And um, the other bad news is, of course, um, a lot of people have heard this in the news, that the Prince of Wales has just been diagnosed with coronavirus. So he's tested positive for coronavirus. Um, on the weekend last, around, I guess, March 21st, 22nd, he had started showing some symptoms of coronavirus. And, you know, uh, according to the news, the Prince of Wales probably contracted it around March 13th, okay? And in between the time of contracting the coronavirus um, and, the, and the diagnosis, right, he's been in contact with the Queen, okay? But she's doing fine, and his wife... Camilla is not, does not have coronavirus. She's tested negative for the coronavirus. So, you know, one of the things I want to say before I get into his chart and talking about the things that are going on in the Prince of Wales' life, I want to let you know that according to the news, he is recovering at home. He's not on a respirator. He's not going to the hospital. He's actually able to work. So he's still able to work. So he's working right now. So that means he's strong and he's fighting this virus off. And of course, when I'm, you know, discussing his astrology, I want people to, you know, hear me out. Like, I don't wish anything bad on the Prince of Wales. I'm just talking about his chart and some of the things that are, you know, showing up in his chart. It's not going to be all about illness, but I am going to talk about the coronavirus and where it may be showing up in his chart and my reasoning for it. Also to let people know, I use a combination of traditional and modern principles when I when I look at someone's natal chart. You know, I'm looking at, you know, I'm, I'm using things like, you know, I, I pay close attention to the seven planets that you can see with the naked eye, okay? I also look at aspects that are conjunct, square, opposite, uh, oppositional aspects, you know, opposition, the oppositions, the squares, the conjunctions, Okay, the trines, the sextiles, those kinds of aspects. Okay, those are the aspects, the traditional aspects. Okay, so you can see it down here. This is trine, this is opposite, you know, opposition. This is trine. Um, this one where we hear sextile, conjunction. Okay, don't see any squares. Oh, there's one little square there separating square to Pluto. OK, and even though I do include some of the outer planets in looking at someone's chart, I always, always focus in on the seven traditional planets. They're very important. OK, so um, also like, you know, I use the perfection years, right? Every year you get a different perfection year and different topics come up. I also take a look at the sect of a chart. Are you born during the day or night? And so in this case, Prince of Wales, the Prince of Wales is born at night, okay? There's his son down there in lonely old Scorpio, okay? There's his um, nighttime son, okay? There it is right there. Anyways, he's born at night, and that means, uh, when I look at his chart, that the moon, okay, Venus, and Mars are part of his night team of planets. So those are the planets that are strong in his chart, according to traditional principles. If you're born at night, then the moon, Venus, and Mars are the planets that are pretty productive. They're trying to get, they're trying to bring forth your destiny in the best way possible. So I would, you know, like if Charles was sitting across me, uh, I would be, you know, talking about those three 
planets, and I call the moon a planet. It's actually a luminary, and the sun is a luminary as well. They're both luminaries, but traditionally they were called planets. So I would be talking about his moon, Venus, and Mars. It's very active places in his chart, right? But there's other things as well to look at. However, if he was born with the sun above the horizon, then uh, or above the ascendant, descendant line, he would be born during the day. And if you were born during the day, I focus on um, the sun, Jupiter, and Saturn, okay, if you were born during the day. In this case, we have the Prince of Wales. He's a night sect person, okay? So his chart is the night sect, all right? So if you are born at night, okay, the planet that is the most difficult one for people born at night is the planet Saturn, all right? So Saturn, okay, is a tricky planet. It's it's a, a more malefic than Mars. Mars is the productive malefic in the Prince of Wales night sect chart, okay? Saturn is going to be uh, more difficult, right? Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. And now uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to go right into his chart. But what you're going to see in this video is a series of little videos that I put together into one big video that I'm uploading today, March 25th. Hey everybody. Okay, so this is part two. Like I said, I'm going to be stringing a whole bunch of little videos along and then uploading them tonight, March 25th. So this is the Prince of Wales. And according to his natal chart, he has a night sect chart. So without getting into, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to get into a huge amount of detail here. I'm just going to basically you know, just address the basics, but try to do it in the most accessible way possible, like using accessible ideas. Essentially, if you're using traditional astrology, one of the big ideas is to use sect as a way to identify what planets are the most productive planets in the chart. That's the way I like to see it, okay? So in a night chart like the Prince of Wales, his moon which is exalted, which is a very powerful position, it's a very competent moon, is the leading luminary in his very important angular 10th house of vocation and being out in the public eye, being visible and being, well, I mean, he's, he's a ruler. He's, you know, he's the boss basically of what, what he does. And it, it's a very, his moon um, basically reflects the light of his sun down here in the fourth house of tradition, the past, the nation, important families, and, you know, property. Because, of course, he is a huge property owner. He owns, well, he runs the Duchy of Cornwall. And I think it's something like, I, I think I have written down here on my notes, 53,000 hectares of land. So this sun, which is I would say almost peregrine here in the fourth house in Scorpio reflects its light onto the sun. So all of his fourth house issues around property, the environment, farming, the nation, loyalty to the past, loyalty to family, and all of the, those emotions are reflected onto this, onto this moon. Okay, and guide him in his public life in Taurus. The moon in Taurus, like, you know, with, with the moon in Taurus, so powerful and strong and competent. I think it's very competent up here in the 10th house. Makes him um, someone who can, uh, who tries to appeal to masses of people. Okay, he is also very visible out in the public eye. Having a luminary up there in the 10th house will do that. But he's visible, especially in issues to do with land issues, organic farming, anything to do with the environment, which is very close to his heart, very dear to his heart. And of course, he likes to talk a lot about issues around property, architecture, buildings, uh, built structure. I mean, after all, having a son in the fourth house, you would be someone who is, could be very competent about issues surrounding the country, the farm, the land, whatnot. I mean, he really is to a large extent, a farmer king. He's going to be a farmer king. Um, so this moon is his leading luminary. And yes, um, in a night sect chart, 
Venus and Mars come to play. But what I want to do is I really want to focus on the Prince of Wales moon because this year from, well, basically starting last year, November the 14th, 2019 to just before, you know, the day before his birthday, um, he will have a 12th house perfection year. Okay. So this moon over here, which is so important in his natal promise and really identifies the issues that he's into and how he is, uh, you know, how he tries to mobilize people around, you know, improving the environment, getting serious about um, climate change and what it's doing, and also all issues around the countryside in England, which is very much what his son, his interests are, and it is reflected, you know, the, the moon is essentially a reflection from the sun, okay? That moon up here is ruling, is the planet most closely associated with, or as I like to call it, ruling, and others call it ruling his 12th house, which is in the sign of Cancer, and it is his perfection house this year, okay, up until his next birthday. So as I've mentioned in previous videos, every year you get a new perfection house, okay? So from birthday to birthday, you get a different perfection house. And what happens is the perfection house basically breaks down the natal promise, okay? So some aspect of the natal promise will come through year by year through the annual perfection house as it changes. Because the way a lot of traditional astrologers see the chart is it can't be activated all at the same time, okay? There's a natal promise that has to be understood, and that natal promise is broken down year by year through annual perfections. You can also use zodiacal releasing and other types of perfection. Uh, but anyway, I, for the purposes of this video, I really want to focus on the Prince of Wales moon because it is the ruling planet of the current perfection perfection house. Okay. It's the 12th house. It's in cancer. And what it has to say is that issues around the moon, because the moon, of course, is ruling. It is the time Lord of the 12th house perfection year. Okay. Issues that are related to the moon are, and also have sort of a, a difficult sting perhaps because the 12th house having a 12th house perfection year, it's it's sort of wrapped up in a year of um, unhappiness or uh, difficult events, sad events. Sometimes people have called the 12th house the house of self-undoing. Uh, it's a house where we just feel we can't get things done. There's bad luck all around us. Uh, we just feel kind of weakened. Maybe um, sometimes people feel very depressed or have a bout of illness or just, a, it's it's just a house of difficult things. It's very difficult for someone to have a good 12th house perfection year. And a lot of people kind of worry a little bit too much about it. I mean, it's not going to be bad from minute to minute, but it, it does, you, you do have to kind of watch it. And in the Prince of Wales case, he needed to watch it, but clearly he wasn't. Okay. Now let me try to explain this. I'll try to break it down. So I talked about his moon exalted in Taurus and you know, his, his, his interests, which he's very vocal and public about it. But if we take a look at the moon, um, and we know that it is associated with this difficult 12th house, it can be difficult, right? We know that there, you know, there's something about this moon that is difficult, right? So if we look at the moon and we trace down, we'll see that it is trying Prince of Wales, Saturn in the second house. The moon is actually applying to a trine, okay, here in this second house. Now, look, there's some good things about this. The Prince of Wales, with his 53,000 hectares of land, uh, which is, I guess, called the, the, uh, oh, the Duchy of Cornwall or whatnot, you know, that provides him with millions and millions of pounds, and he's getting richer and richer every year. 
And that money, I mean, that, that goes to, you know, charities. It also supports family members and, you know, it supports his staff. I think he has over 120 staff members. I mean, do you know, he buys a lot of properties with it. He develops buildings and does all kinds of things that his Scorpio son is interested in and that his moon is also interested in. Okay. And because this is a trying to Saturn in the second house, it shows that, do you know that powerful moon is able and his interests with the land and with farming and anything to do with the stewardship of the land has made Charles uh, rich, do you know, or very wealthy. I mean, look, Saturn uh, is rule is in his second house of Virgo, you know, so it's, it's, it's money. He's getting some money from this. It's a good relationship. And as he gets older, right, he's become wealthier, which is, you know, Saturn in the second house, when it, when there's a trine to the moon like that can suggest wealth at, at an older age. And he has, as he ages, gotten wealthier. So, but let's just slow down for a second here. Now, like I said, he's having this year a 12th house perfection year, okay? So we have to pay attention to the moon, right? And the moon is looking pretty good and it is trying his Saturn, but there's a problem here, okay? And it has to do with sect. In a night chart, the moon, Venus, and Mars are fairly productive. Like you have to take a look at their relationship with other planets, but they are trying to push forward a destiny, okay? Hopefully it's a good one. Now, the thing is, is that Saturn in a night chart, okay, is a part, is called the out of sect malefic. So it's the bad guy, okay? It's Saturn is, is, can be a difficult planet for the Prince of Wales. Now, if we look at what Saturn rules, Let's look over here. It rules his house of marriage. Okay. It rules his house of marriage. And it also rules his house of open enemies because the seventh house traditionally is marriage and open enemies. Okay. So he has, he has some enemies. He definitely does. And he's had difficult, really difficult time in his marriage. Okay. So here we can just by, by seeing, and also that, you know, that marriage was, you know, and the difficulties in his marriage was very public, right? So we can see that that strange relationship between Saturn that, that rules the seventh house and it's trying to the moon up here in the public eye. And the moon, of course, was the ruling planet of Princess Diana, who he did have the very public divorce with and the problems with his marriage and so on, as everyone has seen probably all the shows about Diana and Charles and all their problems. Also, uh, he ended up Saturn, which became as difficult as the planet that rules his seventh house of marriage. Also, uh, that divorce was very costly for him, right? Saturn in operation there, right? <laughs> Took away some of his uh, duchy money. Too bad, Charles. Anyways, also the moon, which was, is, or sorry, was Princess Diana's ruling planet, ruled the 12th house which would put her, you know, in so, it's sort of a difficult relationship with her. But anyways, I'm not going to talk about that. Let's focus on this Saturn here. Okay. So Saturn is, is, is not working well all the time for Charles. Okay. Here it's caused him difficulty in the areas of relationship and open enemies. And here in the sixth house of Capricorn, it's caused him you know, uh, right now we can see problems with illness, right? Because even though the sixth house shows someone who is, you know, when Saturn is ruling the sixth house, of course, it deals with the day-to-day, day-to-day routine. Uh, and of course it rules health and illness, which is now it's acting up, but do you know, it's, it's, um, sorry, someone was knocking on the door there and I had to do a rethink. Okay. So anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. So Saturn here, I talked about how it didn't work too well with his relationship. And now we're seeing that the, you know, because the Saturn is the out of sect malefic or the difficult planet or the naughty planet, 
we can see that it rules the house of health and illness. So what this tells us is that there is a connection, you see, if you get it. Here is the moon. It's in charge of the 12th house. So it's, it, you know, it, most of the times it's working well, except if it's a perfection house and it's the 12th house. So what it's going to do, it's going to cause some trouble. How is it going to cause trouble? Well, the moon is connected to Saturn. So the Saturn is involved in this perfection house, okay? Because it's making, it's in aspect to the moon. Now we'll say, oh, well, wait a second, wait a second. That's a good aspect, but wait a second, wait a second. Saturn is ruling the seventh house where Charles had a really hard time. This Saturn is not always working well for Charles, okay? So if it didn't work well there, maybe it's going to be a problem when it's transiting here through his sixth house, okay? And so when uh, it's, it was estimated that Charles contracted coronavirus was on, I think, Friday the 13th, so March 13th, he contracted it. And when he did, around that time, Saturn was at 29 degrees in his sixth house of illness, okay? And it was conjunct uh, Mars at 17. Well, it's sort of a, a wider conjunction, okay? But the important thing is, is that if you were, you know, if this wasn't Charles, if you were just looking at, at someone's chart and you know that, okay, wait a second, the 12th house has to deal with isolation, hospitals, bad news, uh, you know, quarantines, anything that, that in which you are taken out of the world and things that are hidden, this, you know, is, is a difficult year. And we can see it's already been difficult for Charles because of course his son has decided to dump the Royal family and move to North America and, you know, be the, I don't know, uh, his, you know, set up his own little kingdom there. And of course he has his, uh, his brother, Andrew, who is, was associating with a, with a pedophile, convicted pedophile, and is still in the news about that. And that really threatened the security of the royal family. So he really is having this, you know, after his birthday in 2019, this perfection year kicked in and those things started to kick in. His brother was still in the news. His brother is wanted by the FBI to talk to the FBI. And of course, he loses his son, his son, uh, his son wants some money from the duchy and wants to get the heck out of the UK and quit the firm. It's been a very serious 12th house perfection year. So if, if, and just looking at that, just knowing, okay, this, this, this house is really active. We would have to look at this relationship from the moon uh, to Saturn. And we'd also have to look at the relationship to Mercury here, its opposition to Mercury. But in this case, we would really see that Saturn would be, would be in some way involved in the mischief, in the mischief of a 12th house perfection year, because it's ruling, it rules his seventh, causing problems in relationships. And it's also ruling his sixth of illness. And then we look here and we're like, okay, you know, back there on March 13th, we can see this, this deadly lineup happening in Capricorn affecting a lot of people. Do you know, especially his age, he's 71 years old. So obviously Saturn and the situation, do you know, he's out in the public and mixing with the public, even though he knows that the coronavirus is going on. Yet where is the astrologer? Where is the astrologer to sit down with the prince to say, you shouldn't have done it. Like you should have, you really should have cut back on your activities the minute you figured out that this virus was moving quickly, because of course, Saturn as a malefic is so connected to the moon, which is in fact the time Lord for the year. So also just in general, okay, even if we knew it wasn't a 12th house perfection year, whatever, we know just looking that Saturn is the most difficult planet for someone who has is, is got a night chart and it's right there, so close to Mars, two of the malefics, right? The, we have the, the Saturn's the big malefic, Mars is the lesser, right? Whatever, they're both bad guys <laughs> and they cause trouble 
when they're transiting, and these all these planets here are the transits, okay? So here they are right now, but on March 13th, like I was saying, uh, Mars was uh, applying to Saturn at 17, okay? So that's when he contracted the virus. And then um, on the weekend, so March 22nd, 21st, 22nd, Mars was at 23. Now it's a bit different now because I did this chart for today. But then um, on the 22nd, Mars was at 23 degrees Capricorn. Saturn was at 29 and Mars was applying in conjunction to Pluto. So a very malefic, dangerous, uh, dangerous lineup of planets, especially here with this Saturn being involved here just transiting the Prince of Wales sixth house of health and illness. And the sixth house in general is a difficult house. It's about sadness and sorrow and difficult times and not feeling very powerful. So unfortunately, Prince of Wales does not believe in astrology and does not, I don't think he uses it personally. It's too bad because of, of course he would have been able to perhaps protect himself with an astrologer, if he was dealing with an astrologer with a traditional background, especially an astrologer that could use sect, they could easily see that this Saturn transit, which is his out of sect malefic, is actually kind of dangerous where it is. But anyways, the important thing is, is that he's on the mend and he is walking around and he is working and he's up in Scotland and he probably has 10,000 servants there taking care of him and taking his temperature. I mean, he gets a private doctor. Most don't, but he does. So, do you know, uh, Saturn, you know, in a way is not going to, you know, knock him out, but it's still very serious for a 71-year-old to experience COVID-19. Hey, everybody. Okay, this is part three, and we're still talking about the Prince of Wales and his shitty, shitty year, <laughs> his 12th house perfection year. I hope it gets better for him, but I doubt it. I think there's more trouble to come. It might not be his health, but it could be related to other problems that are um, involved with the cancer ruling the 12th house. Cancer, of course, is related to family. Um, as a sign, health-wise, it rules the chest. And, and some people say the lungs are the, you know, I, okay, let's just say the chest. And it's it's terribly true that, with the moon being the time lord for the year and the 12th house being about very difficult events, the connection, right, is that the chest is, is the place that causes the most trouble for people that are sick with coronavirus, okay? And also, you know, with the moon being the time lord for the year, the 12th house time lord, it's related to the physical body. The moon is seen as your physical, you know, your physical state in traditional astrology, we see the moon is very, very closely associated, not just with changing moods. Sometimes modern astrology really looks at the moon as your psychology, what your soul needs, that kind of thing. That's important too, do you know? Because, you know, that is really relevant, especially, especially in the Prince of Wales, do you know, where he is very emotionally driven around all issues to do with farming and stewardship of the land and protection of the land in the UK. And also, of course, making money from the land with an exalted moon he's going to make, especially with its, its trying to Saturn, which sometimes can work out well for him, except when it's wrapped up with um, a transit that's led to the coronavirus in his sixth house. And so I just want to repeat that Saturn was in his sixth house, very close to Mars when he contracted the coronavirus. So he, you know, around, um, unfortunately for him, Friday the 13th. So anyway, the moon in traditional astrology is also your physical body. So this is another tip off for us. You know, if Charles had an astrologer, they would have been really focused in on, um, ailments around his body because the moon has a lot to do with the body especially do you know it's in the it's ruling the 12th house and so we can see how you know family which is also a cancerian topic the chest area which is uh which is an ailment that cancer cancer nat natives are associated with as far as their illness goes 
uh, issues to do with some Cancerian people like Princess Diana and maybe his own son, William, who is a tricky relationship, but just generally family issues, right, have always been a, a little bit difficult. Also, can we say that um, Camilla, who was his mistress for the long, longest time, also a, a Cancerian, and she was hidden for years and years in the 12th house, right? The 12th house is all about hidden things, things that are hidden from sight. And do you know, so the moon being the time Lord for the year definitely was the tip off, especially since it's so wrapped up with the difficult, you know, uh, difficult issues that come up with the 12th house perfection year, right? It's the tip off that the body would be involved. And do you know, that's exactly what's happened. This year has been about uh, physical ailments and family ailments. And those are the main issues, I think, that are ruling his his 12th house, right? Especially because I, I really think it's this relationship here with Saturn. This does him very well for money, but it, it's it's a dance with the devil. That Saturn is his out of sec malefic and it's... um. It may do well for money and, and land stewardship and making money from land, but it doesn't do well over here where it rules illnesses, uh, including, well, in the sixth house too, he's had um, quite a few broken bone injuries, I think, problems with his bones and injuries around his bones because, you know, he's someone who's, you know, he's got this, this Mars-Jupiter conjunction in the fifth house. So he likes you know, activities that are very physical and around horses, right? And this is another thing, you know, his moon, of course, is ruling the 12th house. And the 12th house is associated with um, larger beasts of burden like horses. So he's going to get, he's going to get injuries, injuries around his bones, you know, so he has to, he has to watch out with some of his pursuits. Although Mars, because it is one of his night sect planets, it's, um it's productive here. And of course it has, some, uh, you know, some protection around Jupiter a little bit. So, do you know, he, you know, as far as injury or illness would probably be uh, related to uh, bones breaking and, you know, sore tendons and injuries that are related maybe to rough handling, like rough sports or whatever. But in this case, um, clearly his body, which is ruled by the moon, which the moon is, sorry, is a topic that the moon rules rather and is ruling his perfection house and connected to Saturn, which is over here ruling his sixth house of illness and most importantly going through this house. Now, Saturn is right now ingressed into his seventh house of relationships and open enemies. So it's there for the next couple of months. Um, it moves back into Capricorn. Saturn moves back into Capricorn around July 3rd, okay? Um, by that time, Mars will be out. And But when Sa when Saturn moves back into Capricorn in July, uh, I wonder if he doesn't have another bout of illness or some other injury or illness. So he has to be careful from July up until, I think, December at some point when Saturn moves permanently back into the seventh house. Sorry, I had to stop it there. Saturn... Saturn moves, like I said, back into the sixth house July 3rd. So it could be, like I was saying, Charles might have a bout of illness or issues around his health come, come to the, you know, come to the, for, uh, come into the foreground, you know, something happens to him again. Obviously, uh, Saturn is, is playing with him here and, you know, has, you know, has really created a problem, this transit. However, Saturn in the seventh house is going to bring him more problems, uh, but with other people. But then on December 18th, uh, sorry, here, I'm getting ahead of myself. Saturn is right now in the seventh house. Let me make this clear. Saturn is in the Prince of Wales seventh house. Okay. Until July 3rd. Then after July 3rd, it moves back into his sixth house. It stays in Capricorn where he could have more illnesses or difficulty around his health. Stays in there until December 17th. And then on December 18th, it's back into his seventh house. So from March to July, Saturn is in his seventh house. And it's going to probably 
create some problems for him around relationships with others and some of, uh, you know, some enemies, maybe, you know, he might find a lot of uh, family fights and some open opponent, someone becomes his open opponent and it's going to be difficult. It is, of course, going to be during, right? He's still going to have a 12th house perfection when this is all taking place. Um, when, uh, okay, so let me, I've just jumped ahead of myself a little bit here. His birthday is on November 14th. So Saturn is still going to be in Capricorn uh, when his perfection house moves and it's going to move over into the first house where the sun is going to be more prominent, okay? Because the sun rules his first house. So issues around leadership and ruling and the country and nation are going to be very, very important um, after his birthday coming up in 2020, November 2020. But still, the Saturn transit is, of course, really significant for us all, Do you know, depending on where it lands. In his case, it's, um, it's his out-of-sect malefic, so it's the trickiest planet, according to sect, in his chart, and it is really messing with him. But um, I think he's going to have a, an open opponent, someone who really opposes him, uh, comes out and starts, um, starts talking turkey. I don't know, but it's going to take place fairly soon with Saturn moving in there. And then of course, Mars marching forward as well. So we'll have to see. And of course, you know, some of the things that take place in Charles' life over the next little while with this, you know, Saturn uh, Uranus square that's developing between his Saturn and Uranus up here in his 10th house of the public eye just passed over his moon, right? Um, it, it's, it, there, there is some bad, more bad news to come. And so it truly is going to be a horrible year for Charles. And we're going to hear more about it in the near future. So I was going to do a whole bunch of other little descriptions about his chart, but I'll just leave it there. And I hope you've enjoyed that. Blessings, everyone.